Hi, people of the internet. I thought I'd just come here and make a little movie about tips for the road test. In case you have your road test coming up. Yeah. It really feels like I haven't had my coffee today. But I thought I would just come on here. I noticed that my road test article is like five million words long and maybe not everyone wants to read that huge long thing. So I thought I would make a little video just with some of the tips for road tests. One of the first things to be aware of is just get your vehicle ready. A lot of people don't notice there's a turn signal out, headlight, tail light, broken seat belts, fuel empty, tires are bad, you need insurance, no cracks in the windshield, stuff like that. Next tip is to use your parking brake every time you park. A lot of people that haven't gone to driving lessons don't really do this because their parents don't really teach them. But you do need to use the parking brake every single time you put the car into park to park it, so... Backing up in a straight line, pulling over doing your hazard perception, parallel parking, reverse stall parking... Any kind of parking or stopping. Next tip is to do your complete stops. Whenever you're stopping, you have to actually stop, make sure it's a full stop. A lot of people kind of, kind of sort of stop. Like this car here, it didn't actually stop. It just kind of sort of stopped and that's just not good enough. I'm on my bouncy ball, in case I look weird. Right turns with red lights, make sure you fully stop. A lot of student drivers here, you can turn right on a red light, but they don't actually stop first. That's bad. That's bad, don't do that. Stopping before the sidewalk, make sure you stop before the sidewalk. Anywhere there's a sidewalk, which is basically coming out of any parking lot, lane, or driveway or private property of any kind, don't break the law. Don't do it. <sighs> Such a good, amazing tip. Um, this car is driving the bike lane. It's not really, it's not really true. There's a pedestrian coming, so if you stop there longer, they would be cutting off the pedestrian, which isn't cool. Common reasons people fail for doing something illegal is crossing solid white lines, going too fast in the speed zone, school zone, or park zone, and turning right on a red light where it says you're not allowed to because they didn't notice. Those are common reasons. Next tip is stop for pedestrians. Pretty much any pedestrian. There's not a lot of places where pedestrians aren't allowed to cross except for jaywalking. But if they're at any intersection, even if it doesn't have the lines, it is a crosswalk. It's an unmarked crosswalk. It's a real thing. It's a legal place to cross the road. So be sure to stop for them all and give them extra room. We don't want to block intersections. And we don't want to stop really, really, really close to them. In case we get rear-ended, we want to keep them safe. Okay, let's talk about the steering wheel. Steering wheels are important. <laughs> you need two hands. Um, you need two hands all the time. All the time. Uh, like... You don't have to glue them there with like super glue or something, but they are going to expect you to have two hands kind of all the time. You can do this, like, okay, I move my hair, that's fine. But you don't want to like leave your hand on the gear shifter thing or like anywhere else. You need two hands. If you're driving a standard, obviously you have to shift gears, but 
Whenever you're done shifting, just put your hand back on the wheel. They're very strict about this. And it's because they want you to really control the car with your hands. And yeah, that's kind of important. A lot of people don't do that. Uh, other things about the steering wheel, the position of your hands, nine and three is recommended. 10 and two, and eh, it's kind of it's kind of going out of style because airbags come out at 300 kilometers an hour. So it's better, it's safer if your hands are kind of lower. Nine and three is recommended usually by most driving professionals. Happy Friday. The other thing you don't want to do is like hook the wheel. It's like you grab it from the inside and go like so for a left turn, right turn, it's not good. It's not good control. You will fail the entire road test if everything is perfect, but you're steering, you're doing great things with the steering wheel because it's so important. Okay. Make sure you know how to park on a hill. Make sure you know how to parallel park. Make sure you know how to reverse stall park. Make sure you know how to reverse in a straight line. When you pull over there, you might ask you to open your door. Not that opening your door is very difficult, but what they're looking for is a shoulder check that you're not just gonna open your door randomly when there's a cyclist or anyone else beside you. You need to mirror the shoulder check for sure before you open your driver's door. That's basically what they're gonna look for there. Proper turns are really important. You don't want your turns to look all funky and weird and like wide and like make them look nice. Yeah, I know that's a really amazing tip. Scanning intersections, especially if you are the first car stopped at the intersection and your light is red and then your light goes green, don't just go. Like, you really have to check that's the most common time there's going to be a crash, if there is going to be one, is when the lights are just changing. So it's kind of a sketchy time. If you're the first car, just take a good look. Um, and don't do this kind of scanning that the examiner can't really tell, like this. Like, no one can tell that you looked. But you don't want to make it too dramatic either. Like. Okay, I gotta drive down. Like, it doesn't have to be that dramatic, but. You can actually see way more if you turn your head. Uh, it's true. And this actually saves people's lives. I'm pretty sure this has saved my life like 47 times already in my life. People don't stop for red lights. They, they do, kind of, sometimes, but eh. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. It's a very dangerous time when the light just goes green, so make sure you scan, but you also want to do that scan kind of all the time, like four-way stops, traffic circles, two-way stops, obviously you're going to be doing it anyway, but they don't want you just like staring straight ahead because that's not good. You need to know what's going on around you, like in a circle all the time. And the only way to do that is to kind of like look. <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. Okay. Train tracks is another place you want to do a scan. Just kind of look left, center, right. Oh, maybe not center. It's probably not a train coming towards you, but left, right. Like actually, same thing. Just look. Don't just do the looking like this. Like, ah, it's fine. Like, no, just take a good look. Train probably won't run you over, but it's good to be sure. If you fight with a train, probably you won't win. That would suck. Make sure your lane changes are nice. Mirror signal shoulder check. Don't change lanes in the middle of the intersection. Don't change lanes over a solid white line.
merging on the freeway. You don't need to do that to get your um, N, but you do need to, to, when you're getting rid of your N, to go for your class five. Don't speed, don't keep up with speeding traffic on the freeway. That is an automatic fail. Just match your speed up to the speed limit and blend in. It's just a lane change. Mirror signal shoulder check. Just make it nice and smooth. Okay, I'm a little crazy, but Make sure you know your hand signals. The examiner will ask you that before you go. So if you don't know, left hand, straight out. That is for left turns. Right turns, like this. Stopping, like that. So the examiner will kind of hang out outside the car and get you to do that. We don't really have to do that in real life. Most of the time your signals work, but sometimes they don't work, in which case you would be expected to do those especially when you're turning left, lane changing, turning right, any other time you would do your turn signal. If you fail the test in the first two seconds, uh, don't give up because you already paid for it. So like just complete the test and do your best. And then at the end, even though you didn't make it, you will get that report card type of thing, which will tell you what to work on. So it will be an official like assessment. So kind of give you a all around guide of what you need to work on. So it's kind of worth it to just do your best for the rest of the test if that does happen. And a lot of people fail the road test. So don't be too worried if you failed it already. It happens. I failed my road test too, like the first one. Why? Because, because, because. Right shoulder checks. Oh, that was my left shoulder, but I'm a little dyslexic. Right shoulder checks. Yeah, I didn't do those. So if you are driving in a really, really fat, a fat lane and you're gonna go turn right, you should be kind of moving over to get closer to the curb somewhere before your turn, you would be expected to do a shoulder check before you do that little moving over. Anytime it's more than like one meter. Because it's kind of like a lane change, even though it's not an official lane change, there could be a cyclist or something there, anything. People, people drive not that good. So there's not supposed to be something there, but there might be. And of course, another right shoulder check before you turn check for pedestrians, any kind of road users that might be there. You also need to do shoulder checks, mm, pulling over, pulling into traffic, lane changing, freeway merging, opening your door, all that kind of exciting stuff. Right turn on a red light. Right turn on a red light. Make sure you stop. You don't have to turn right on a red light. It's red. <laughs> you can if you want to. It's kind of good to like, well, like check, like kind of look around, show the examiner that you aren't clueless. Because if there's absolutely nothing there at all and you can see there's nothing there and there's no turning restriction sign, just go for it. Or you can just sit there and wait for it to go green. It doesn't really matter. It's a red light. Red light means stop. So don't feel pressure to do that. Um, yeah. Parking on hills, make sure to turn your wheel the appropriate way. The appropriate way. Whatever that means. Yeah. So uphill with a curb. If you're parking on the right side of the road, on the right side of the road you would turn the wheels left and then your front tire would run into the curb if the car was rolling away without you were trying to no curb uphill you would turn it to the right then it would kind of swing out but then it would end up going backwards off the road not killing people which is always good to avoid 
parallel parking. You don't have to be really, 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 really good at your parking. Like, I'm not even good at parking. Okay, I'm kind of good at it now, but <laughs> like driving instructors, it's not like I park like perfectly all the time. So new drivers, like brand new drivers are not expected to be really, 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 really good at parking. You just kind of have to have a general idea. They're not going to get out and measure it and make sure it's like exactly between the lines and stuff like that. It's more important that you do your 360 degree check before backing up every time. It's about observation, knowing what's around your car and making sure it's safe and looking the direction you're traveling. So when you drive forward, you look forward, right? When you drive backwards, you have to look backwards. The mirror doesn't show you everything. So you can't just use the mirror. There's blind spots. So they're kind of more looking, more interested that you are safe. You're observing stuff. You know if there's a person about to walk behind you when you're backing up. That's way more important than like, can you park really nicely? Like nobody parks really, really nicely when they've only been driving for a year or two. I mean, yeah, they do, they do, but like, it's hard. It is hard. It takes a long time to get good at parking. So you kind of have to get it done, but you can fix it. If it's all crooked and weird, just fix it. It's not a big deal. It's parking. Parking is, people don't like burst into flames when parking, but it's good to kind of just practice it.